The Line 6 HX Stomp has got to be one of the most peculiar devices that I've ever owned. And I'm not just talking about a guitar related product, but even of any consumer electronics device, I can't think of another product where I've been on such a strange and interesting journey through the product's life cycle. When this, this was released at the back end of 2018, uh, I bought it straight away thinking it would be my one and done pedal for fly rigs um, and modeling, recording, do it all. I quickly realized that it wasn't for me. It required a lot more tweaking than I wanted to put in. And there was this feeling of latency or delay or rubbery slippage that I wasn't liking. It quickly got thrown in a drawer and effectively used as a paperweight for some time. But I'm super glad I never sold it because over the intervening years, Line 6 have released these updates and have periodically improved in, in every regard. And so it's gone from being almost useless to me on those early dates I was using it overseas to now being an integral part of my travel rig and even my home rig where I will routinely now just boot it up and play with it for fun. It's such a strange thing to say about an electronics device. Usually these things start off great and then they get worse over time, but this is objectively in every measure improved over the life cycle um, for free. Now you would have to imagine at some point they need to keep monetizing the product with something new and have a new device but yeah it really is peculiar how this has been updated now um well this is going to get be getting on for over five years old now this hx stomp in the, the exact same uh, physical device um but the helix family the platform that this has been um updated is got to be 2015 is it eight maybe years getting on for nine years old now and it's still being updated for free um, it's really strange. I'm not sure how or why that is viable. Maybe they just continually keep selling these, but you would think that there would be, you know, some, some secondary version or at least one repackaging um, of this over the years. And it hasn't happened. I think where this started off from and to where it is now, I'd, I'd like to try to find a stock 2018 version of the HX Stomp and compare them side by side for the feature set and all the different and the ways that things have changed and improved but they could really easily have rebadged, repackaged and resold the current firmware in a new enclosure. But it hasn't happened and it's really peculiar, I find. I'm not complaining about that. I think this is an incredible deal now for people. And this has gone from being, this device has gone from being something I would really urge people to stay away from to now saying that I think almost every guitar player should probably own one of these for the price. It's around the 450, 450 pounds mark, 500 pounds mark and you get so much bang for your buck with it. So recently, well, this video is inspired by, I was playing around with the Litigator amp model, and this amp model is a custom, one of Line 6's own designs, it's based roughly on that dumbbellish kind of boutique thing. And it really is a beautiful amp, and it's the model in the Helix um, that changed my mind. It really did turn me around on this idea that this is not a, a serious professional device. I think that this amp model, the Litigator amp model, really holds its own against anything really of the other platforms. You can't say that about every amp model in the HX Stomp, but they, as a, but they are improving them all the time. There's been some new ones released recently, some more of Line 6's own designs, plus the Marshall 2203. Uh, one of the criticisms about the I've had about the HX Stomp is the Marshall models are not particularly great, so they're starting to address that. So. Really, um, yeah, and that Marshall 2203, it's a great model. Um, I'm also finding the, the stock settings or the, the, the settings when you load up a model are starting to become more useful as well, where they're a little less spiky and bright and a little bit more to my taste. So again, that's another um, improvement of it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about this really and break down this preset. Um, I was playing around with a litigator and making some new sounds and then this melody stumbled out and then I created quickly created this backing track and this jam um, this tune that I that you heard at the start of the video so the rest of the video I'll be breaking down the preset and showing you how I got the sounds and how it was it inspired this track if you want the preset then I'll link it in the description below along with the backing track so yeah let me know what you think what do you think of the HX Stomp what do you think of the Helix in, in general how do you feel it compares to the other modelers and let me know what you think of the tone and the track in the comments. And um, yeah, okay, let's break down the preset. <laughs> 
Now, as I've already mentioned, the Litigator amp model shines equally well for very clean sounds all the way through to very overdriven sounds. And by using the snapshots feature of the Helix family, you can access various different gain stages, almost like you're making multiple channels out of the same amp. Now, on the HX Stomp, we've only got the three snapshots, so I have to fudge this to get four different layers or stages of gain by using a different preset for the very clean amp model. So as you can see here, I've got this um, preset number 70, which is called Change My Cleans. This has got the very clean dialed in litigator with all these shimmery, spacey effects on. And then where it goes into the melody and the solos, I'm on a different preset, um, which is Change My Leads. And then I've got the three different um, stages of gain for the lead sounds that I'm using. But the first thing I'm gonna take you through is just how I'm setting up the amp itself on this lead patch. So the three different levels of lead tone that we've got. So um, starting off here, we've got the drive all the way up on 10. Now, because of the way the gain is structured on this amp model, this is incredibly dynamic. So although, although the drive is up on 10, you can hear if I pick lightly, it's still very clear and almost clean. If I dig in on the bridge pickup maybe, You can hear the drive and this is why I discovered this sound and then discovered this melody was because it was so beautifully clean and clear. You can go from a very clean sound to quite a sustained singing sound just on this one, uh, this one setting and just by altering your picking dynamics. So yeah, drive up on 10, then the bass is set to snapshot uh, mode here. So this is on six for this snapshot one. As you can see we're on snapshot one. Uh, then the mids at 7.3, that stays, stays static for this preset. We've then got the treble and presence are static two, that's four and zero respectively. The channel volume, this is really important. This is set to snapshot mode as well. So 7.3 um, for this snapshot and then the master even more important this is at seven for this preset and the master plays a great um, part in how driven and how crunchy the tone is as well yeah masters on seven and that's going to change as we go through the different snapshots uh, sag and everything this is just standard so i haven't messed with this here so five on five ripple 3.8 bias x bias x, and bias of five and that's it for the actual amp um, itself. So if I go through the snapshots now, so if I go to the mid gain, so this is where the melody goes up an octave. So if I go to mid gain, what this has done is um, reduce the bass slightly to five and the channel volume down slightly as well to six. The master's gone up 7.5, just a small amount. Um, and then also what's happened is it's engaged the kinky boost. So I've now got the kinky boost for this setting. So the drive's on five, the boost is on, the bright is on. Um, and that's it for that second half of the, um, the melody. Solo then goes back down to this first snapshot again, um, back down to snapshot one. Um, although at various points I do kick in um, the compressor, which is on this little extra foot switch here. Uh, so the compressor's got these settings. So it's the kinky compressor, it's got the sensitivity on five, the mix on 50%, attack at zero, release at 10 and the level at four. That's it. So let's go through to snapshot three. So this is the lead. This is where the rhythm guitar kick in and it's a bit heavier at the end with the power chords. So what's happening here is we have drive at 10, the bass has come down again to 4.2 because as you crank that um, drive and the, the volume and the, the master, you just need to bring the bass down to compensate a bit. Uh, channel volume 6.4, that's changed on this snapshot. Masters again at 10 and uh, the rest are the same. So again, really what's happened there is I've just dropped that bass a little bit more for this snapshot. But also what happens is the compressor kicks in again and also the kinky boost. So the kinky boost, the kinky compressor, these are based off of the exotic um, series of pedals, the mini ones, I think, the, um, the compressor and, and the boost. And if you find that you've already got an amp model with nice, character of gain, but you want more from it. I f the Kinky Boost, Kinky Compressor, I find are really good for just giving you that, kicking you over the edge with it. So the boost settings are drive on eight, the boost is on and the bright is on. Moving on to the cab block. Now this is an area of the Helix that has changed and been improved radically throughout the life cycle of the product. 
I think it was Helix Firmware 3.5. They massively overhauled it and improved it, lowered the DSP required as well. So um, all round improvement to the tone, sound and response of the cabs and reduce that need, which, well, in my opinion, was a necessity sometimes to put custom third-party IRs into the Helix. So this is my favorite settings that I'm using a lot now with, the, um, with this firmware. And I've saved it as a favorite here, but so you can't see what it is, but it's the 4x12 25 greenbacks um, cab. And then I'm using the 160 ribbon mic, position of four, distance of three, um, angle is zero degrees, then no low cut, and then a high cut on this at six kilohertz. You don't really need the high cut as much as you used to as well. I find that uh, I, I was always compensating by rolling off so much highs with the, the Helix thing, but if I remove the high cut, it's not spiky and fizzy as, it, as spiky and fizzy as it used to be without it. So the remaining blocks, the delay and reverb, these are static and don't change for the snap per snapshot. So I can go through these pretty quickly. I'm using the transistor tape with a quarter note delay, 54% feedback, 3.6 while flutter. I'm using a 75% scale, so we get that kind of uh, dotted effect, the Andy Timmons kind of thing, the, oh, turn the delay on. So you get the, Da, 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 and spreads at 2.9 and you should be able to hear that going between the left and right speakers I think um, and that creates with this melody that is going on a really nice subtle um, bed for it to sit on in the background so the melody da, 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 it's a really nice um, subtlety in the background that supports it Hear that ticking away behind it nicely with that bounced um, dotted delay. A mix of 30%, everything else is zero there and trails are off. And then finally we have um, the dynamic plate reverb, which is an astonishingly nice sounding reverb. If I turn the delay off, it's a really gorgeous plate reverb. Um, Decays at 2.5 seconds, pre-delay at 10 milliseconds, uh, the M rate at 3.3, M ring at 6, mix at 30. And then I didn't really touch anything else, so just the EQs are just um, standard. So, oh, one also <laughs> thing I always have to mention with these things, on the input block, uh, gate is off, and then the input uh, Z setting is set to one mega ohm really important for me obviously you can mess with that if you want and change but it really does affect the the upper clarity of the sound and the feel um, when that's not on one mega ohm it feels very slippy and rubbery and uh, it's not nice to play legato on so yeah that's a big one for me so now let's go back and look at that clean preset which is where I'm getting that fourth layer of gain from, uh, which is the totally clean version of a litigator. Now, if you've got a H -stomp, um, HX Stomp XL, you could probably do this maybe with the four scenes, although I don't know if you'd have enough DSP to get all the shimmery effects in. But if you've got a big helix, you can probably, well, you'll definitely be able to program this into one preset, just have the different snapshots. So if I dial back to uh, preset 70, but let's go through to the edit mode and then the amp, starting with the amp block, uh, cab is all the same, so as you can see now here, for some reason this isn't the uh, this uh, this isn't the favorite. Oh, that's why because the mic is different. Yeah, so I'm using the 4x12 Greenback 25s again, but this has got the 4038 ribbon mic, position 5.3, um, th uh, three inches for the distance. Everything else is oh no, it's not the same. High cuts at 7.2. Clearly, I've uh, changed some things here. <laughs> so this is this clean sound with all this sort of big time-based spaciness on it. Um, yeah, so actually that's a good thing to go through because it's not the same, um, it's slightly different. But to the amp block, so it's litigator, this time the drive's all the way down at 3.3, bass is at 6.1, so up again, because um, we don't have all, have all that drive now. Mids at 7.3, uh, treble at 5.2, and the presence is at zero. Channel volume's all the way up at 10, so the less drive we have, we're compensating for that with more channel volume. Um, channel volume in the HX Stomp is really just 
literal volume, it doesn't affect the tone at all of the um, of the amp model, as far as I'm aware and my experience. Uh, master's down to 6.2, so we've dropped that back, so we're getting less power saturation there. Um, and then everything else should be the same. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, I've got the compressor on here, but it's a different setting. So this is the deluxe compressor, um, thresholds at minus 40.7, ratio of four to one, 20 millisecond attack, 200 millisecond release, and mix 100% and the level at 4.6, and the knees at plus, uh, four, plus six. Um, and I'll go through the time-based stuff in a moment, but importantly on this uh, preset, I've bumped up the level of the output on this preset to plus 3.5. Um, when it's at zero, it's even with the channel volume all the way at 10, it's not enough to kind of um, balance out with the other preset. Okay, so let's go through some of these effects, these time-based effects that are creating these cool spacey sounds. There's two reverbs and there's two delays. And as you can see from the performance mode, I can turn off these fancy glitchy shimmery ones and I've still got like a wet sound. <laughs> So this, if I go through those first in edit, I've got, right at the end of the chain, I've got a dynamic plate like the other one, but there's a longer decay. And the damping's up higher as well. So that's why I talked about getting that upper shimmery kind of effect off the plate. Um, mix at 27. Um, so if you really sort of pay attention to that, you'll hear it. Again, gorgeous, beautiful plate reverb sound. And then also there's a very subtle um, um, Adriatic delay, so an analog type delay. And if I just knock that up so you can hear it a little bit more. So that's the core of the kind of wet sound, if you like. And you can really hear that fullness to the litigator amp model. So much body to it. Sometimes the helix stuff can sound a little thin, and you have to do that cordy trick of uh, sticking a, a low shelf between the amp and the cab block. But with this model and this patch, I just don't need to do it. It sounds really lovely and full. And then I add in as well, in between those delay and um, core delay and reverb blocks, another delay and reverb. And this time I'm using the glitch delay to give you those upper glitchy kind of um, repeats, and then the shimmer. So if I put on the glitch first. You can hear that there, those sound of glitchy repeats. So what's going on here? Well, let's go through the settings. Um, a lot of this stuff with the Helix effects, especially the delays and reverbs, they're so creative, so inspiring that you don't really have to know what's going on necessarily with the specific settings, but just messing around with them, you can create these really beautiful, uh, inspiring sounds. So here I've got a time of uh, 1.076 seconds, um, delay division of three, the mix at 13, the feedback at 13, the sliced feedback 25% and shuffle at 48%. So it's like slicing up and shuffling the delays and then reversing some of them as well. You can see that reverse setting there at 48% and then pitch shifting it at 48% as well. Um, drift at 48%, smooth at 50. And the interval, this is the important part really here, is the interval one is at uh, zero and interval uh, two at plus 12. And we've got low cut at 137 hertz, high cut at 6.3 kilohertz, level at zero and the trails are off. And that, as I say, creates this beautiful glitchy sort of, I think quite a Strymon kind of sound to it. Well, I'll say Strymon, everyone does it now, but that's where I, my first experience with this kind of a sound was with the, like the timeline and the big sky. And then finally, just to cap it off, we put on the shimmer reverb. So this was an, a new 
again, a more relatively recent addition to the HX um, stomp and the HX family's effects in the reverbs category. So this is adding a sheen type shimmer, an octave up, and then also very lower down in the mix, a plus seven, which you have to be careful with how you're adding in these. This is gonna put a fifth interval in. Uh, intensity at 90, feedback at 90, mix at 28. And then it's biased here towards the blend of the A um, interval. So pitch A, so the octave. So we've got 75% of the of this shimmer is gonna be of the octave and only 25% uh, is gonna be of that plus seven. I'll show you the difference in a bit. Decay at four seconds, pre-delay at 150 milliseconds, room size at 30, damping at five kilohertz, and diffusion at 70%, motion at three, and then a low cut of 120, high cut of 6.3, level at zero, trials are off. So this is with everything on, we get the full intro clean sound I was using. I think that just about wraps up this preset breakdown, this video. I've had a really great time messing around with this amp model and with the 3.7 update. Um, there's been some really great additions that have rekindled and further inspired my love of this device. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you like the preset and the track. If you want to get the preset and load it onto your device, it'll be linked in the description below. As well, the backing track. I'll link the backing track as well if you want to jam this tune because I think it's a really, really fun track to play over. Um, yeah, let me know if there's any other amp models you'd like me to check out, any of the effects in the HX series or any of the other modelers that I've got. And yeah, thanks for watching. Check out my app solo over on the Google Play Store and the App Store. Um, big update coming very soon for that. Also check out my website where you can get lessons and courses with me over at davidbb.com. Guitar Hour podcast, you can check that out. Long form discussion with me, Tom Quayle, Jake Wilson and Dan Smith. All linked in the description below and the usual socials, like the video, thumbs it up, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.